Rock a Pat here. All right, guys, we are working on the 1960 Impala. And let's say you guys have, uh, man, you, you, you went and you bought the brake kit. You, 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 you want to change it from drum brakes in the front to disc brakes in the front. And you bought the kit, you spent your money, and you spent all weekend in a six pack of beer or a 12 pack of beer, and you got the front brakes changed, and you got the uh, brake booster on the car, and you got the master cylinder on the car, and everything, and you say, all right, let's go for a drive in my cool car, because now I have disc brakes, I feel safer driving, and you go out there, and you start driving the car, and this happens. The brake pedal goes all the way to the floor before you stop, start stopping. You got a mile and a half of travel going on here. All right, well, there's one thing that doesn't seem to get said that needs to be done in the instruction sheets with these brake kits. Now, at least the kit that I've gotten, uh, this happens to be from uh, Speedway, but man, they're all the same. I don't care if you get it from uh, Summit or Speedway or the particular company that sells parts for your particular vehicle. But what needs to happen is, is manual brakes have a hole that's up here, okay? Manual brakes need leverage, so they need a longer bar from here to the pedal, okay? From here to here needs to be a longer bar. Disc brakes use more fluid going into the calipers and they need more stroke okay you got power assist so you don't need leverage anymore so what you need to do is you need to come down and you need to drill a new hole about an inch down from the original hole okay so I'm gonna set y'all right here and I'm gonna change that hole over that pin over and I'm gonna show you the difference in the brake pedal okay so just bear with me real quick here while I change it down to this lower put position and you'll see how much difference I have in my brake pedal all right now we're gonna set the hit the brake and we're gonna see how far it goes doesn't go near as far brakes are applied I'm not going all the way to the floor so if you've got a manual brake and you are moving it to a disc brake setup you need to lower the position in which your push rod connects to the brake pedal. All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you right here today, today, and today, and today. We are still working on our 1960 Impala with a brand new brake kit. All right, guys, y'all keep rocking and rolling and rolling and rocking. This is just a quickie, just so if you got that problem, I had that same problem on that. 64 short wheelbase truck. I did a brake kit on it and I kept adjusting my rear brakes and I just never could get proper brakes on the thing. Uh, once I relocated that brake pedal push rod, brakes are perfect, man. Uh, I still haven't done the check the rear brakes for adjustment. I try to just, you know. I tried adjusting my rear brakes on that truck, tried adjusting the brakes, tried adjusting the brakes to get the pedal to come up, and it never would. It wasn't until I relocated that pin that I was able to get good brakes. So just remember, if you are working on an old car and it has manual brakes, and you are switching it over to power-assisted disc brakes, you need to relocate because that pin because a manual system needs leverage, and a, and a boosted system needs stroke. All right, guys, y'all keep rocking and rolling and rolling and rocking. And I'm getting ready to start rewiring this dash. Talk to y'all next time.